in the, in the moment. Um, and it's how, how you are uh, expressing your well-being. Um, it doesn't have to stay that way through the entire day. Your, your mental health can, can shift throughout the day or um, it can shift throughout the week. Um, and so this is what you're feeling as, as a person, as an individual. And mental illness is a diagnosable illness that affects a person's thinking, emotional state, and behavior. So the difference between mental health and mental illness is the mental illness is a diagnosable illness um, that someone has uh, is struggling with. Um, and it can affect the mental health portion of your life because as it states here, um, it can take over some of that emotional um, and, and social um, challenges that you have uh, in your life. So we're gonna take a look at different ways that we can start looking at that um, through our students' eyes. So um, our students' mental health is very important and it's imperative that we understand um, how we can help and support them. Um, as you can see here, 13% of children ages eight through 15 experience a mental health condition. Um, so this can be struggling with um, their, you know, how to take on all the emotions that they're feeling, um, you know, and how they can express, you know, when they're sad, when they're um, happy, when they're excited or overstimulated, um, you know, so 13% of students or children struggle with a mental health condition. Of those, 13 to 20% of children living in the U.S., so that's one out of five kids experience a mental health condition in a given year. Um, so one in five students, one in five kid, children are experiencing a mental health condition in a given year. And then 50% of kids are experiencing a mental health condition and they don't receive treatment for it. So this is, um, you know, something that they haven't been able to see either um, their primary care doctor or a therapist or um, someone to, to help them to realize that maybe they're struggling with, with some of their emotional um, and mental thoughts. Um, and then moving on to our section and what we work on uh, in high school, we have 17% of students who um, seriously consider suicide. Um, so that's something that's, that we wanna really be aware of um, if our students are experiencing any of these mental health um, issues or crises in their life, uh, we want to help uh, to stop that and see the signs of students who, who might um, be stuck in this, in this space. And then half of all lifetime cases of mental illness begin by the age of 14. And so that's this age group that we're working with, like I said before. Um, we start high school around the age of 14, and so this is when some of those mental health issues um, can start popping up. And so um, the things that we can do uh, to help those students um, are to recognize the warning signs and symptoms. So in the California, in California, for, through the Healthy Kids Survey, um, we've noted that ninth and 11th grade, because this is when we, we surveyed the students is in ninth grade and in 11th grade, 20% of students have reported that they've had either alcohol or drug abuse. And then in 11th grade, that number has risen to 29% have reported alcohol or drug abuse. And we suspect that some of these numbers sometimes can be a little bit higher because these are reported. So some kids aren't gonna be reporting, you know, any of any alcohol or drug abuse. And so this is, this again is imperative for all of us to understand um, how and what, you know, are some of the signs that we can see that might be happening with our students. Um, and then uh, students who are reporting considering suicide, again, as I mentioned before, um, these are self-reported. And so these numbers can be much higher, um, but we can see in ninth and 11th grade that about 16% of students, which is kind of on average with the, the national average as well, 16% um, of students have contemplated or considered um, suicide. Um, they also go on to ask questions about um, sadness and hopelessness. So this is when, when someone is feeling that they don't have um, the means to be able to work through some of the challenges that they're going through. So we can see here that ninth graders reported about 30% of experiencing sadness and hopelessness. And this goes on to, to talk about chronic sadness and hopelessness. So this isn't just like, you know, one day I'm feeling sad and hopeless. This is chronic, so it's happening um, day after day. And then our 11th graders, they reported about 32% feeling chronic sadness or hopelessness. And so um, 
recognizing some of this. So sadness and hopelessness, things that are signs that we can, we can see um, is that they are removing themselves from situations. Um, that if they were an active and lively student before or individual before, they're no longer um, as active or, um, or involved in what it is that they've been involved with. Um, and so these are some, some things that we can look at. Uh, we can also see that they might not um, be wanting to work on schoolwork or logging in right now, especially during this distance learning, which can be very challenging. Students are, are having a hard time just logging onto the computer because they feel this fatigue with just being on an on a electronic device all day, every day, um, having to work on their assignments. And so if you start seeing some of this, um, some of this in your students, they, they're feeling a little removed or they're struggling to get on, um, this is something that we can start talking with them beforehand about you know, things they can do or recognize um, some of the mental health that our students are experiencing. And I'll turn the time over now to Ms. Chavez Casas to continue on. You're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, we're gonna go into um, kind of identifying and kind of recognizing some of those warning signs um, some of them were mentioned by Mr. Briney, but I want to start off with this little video. Okay, this will show us how, in a cartoon version, you know, how children go and young adults go through the process of their mental health and then kind of showing warning signs of them needing help and actually receiving the help. So if we can play the video, thank you. Man, when I look at that kid, it's hard to believe that that was actually me. I definitely struggled through that time. I was so angry, felt so alone. It was so hard to make friends. But to tell you the truth, I probably wasn't much fun to be around. I definitely found schoolwork so much harder than most people. Every year I struggled and it just felt like it was harder and harder to keep up. But there were people, they tried to reach out to me and I wasn't very nice to them. I just lost control. I just felt so isolated. Yeah, things started to change when I hit year five. You know, my teacher, she just made such a difference. I knew she liked me, even though she pulled me up when I did something wrong. She was always happy towards me and smiling and showed an interest in me. She definitely noticed that I needed something extra than the other kids. So, my teacher ended up calling my parents. She got us booked in with the counsellor, who really listened and got my parents and teacher to understand what was going on with me. Yeah. I just, I don't know what would have happened if my teacher hadn't stepped in when she did. The counselor was cool. She gave my parents advice on how to help me and spend more time with me and things like that. She was also just a massive help for me too. I was calmer and hey, I even made some friends. She gave me some ideas on how to manage my feelings and just make better choices. And it worked. It was such a battle up to that point and things they could have turned out very differently if it wasn't for my teacher. What changed things was someone noticing and taking that extra step to find the right help for me. Okay, as so we move on to the next slide, uh, just like the video tells us, you know, we have to be there for our kids. You know, our kids are your kids because we're one whole community, okay? And if we don't identify or try to be there presently with our kids, then they won't feel that connection. And it could happen, it could happen outside in the community, it could happen inside your home, it could happen at the school, it could be through, you know, sports, um, different activities. I know, and we recognize that right now, things are a little bit more difficult because of the pandemic. 
and, it, and it's hard to, to go out and, and continue to do what we used to do before, like gathering or participating in sports. So even now more than ever, we have to be vigilant. Um, we at the schools try to be vigilant in keeping an eye on the kids. We're not perfect, but our goal is always to be, to be out there and, and to keep an eye out for any of these warning signs, okay? Um, I'll read a few of them, but now that they're at home, um, if you can be our extra set of eyes, um, you know your child, you know your grandson, you know your niece, uh, your nephew, um, you know, you've known them. So you know when you see that little change, um, like I said, especially at this time, because they're, they're not going out with their friends, they're not being in school, they're not getting that same physical activity. Um, so as, as we start to recognize um, those warning signs of a mental illness, and remember, mental health is that big umbrella, okay? And we can have, like we say, our up and downs, our, you know, our bad day and our good day, but us as humans are able to kind of go through that. You know, we have a difficult situation, we work through it, we move on, okay? Um, and we're good. Uh, we ask for help, we're good. But the mental illness is like Mr. Briley had mentioned, is that chronic, when it keeps repeating, repeating, and you're not able to kind of work through it to make it that better day, okay? So you will start noticing um, the kids being, a little bit more sad or withdrawn. They're not interested in doing things that they used to do, okay? And, and keep in mind with this one, it's not that um, they're always playing soccer. They're part of a soccer team, you know, because my daughter plays soccer, so I'll use her as an example. You know, she's always playing soccer, she's always playing soccer, okay? Um, and then right now with the pandemic, it kind of disappeared because we're not doing any sports. Um, that would not be mental illness because it's part of what we're having to go through to keep, you know, everyone safe, okay? But if you would notice her at home where she wouldn't do her other activities, then I would start to worry. So if you notice that your, your son or daughter is not doing their other regular things that they would normally be, at, uh, be doing at home, they're, they're in their room most of the time and they don't want to come out, um, that, that would be alarming and if it's day after day, okay? Um, also, you know, it's okay to talk to your kids. It's okay to kind of look through their room, their stuff, okay? You wanna make sure they're not making any particular plans, okay? Sometimes, um, you know, us as adults, uh, we kind of say we wanna give our children that, that, that idea or that sense that they're also independent because they're in between that age, you know, that, that teenage years, they're in between being a kid, a child, and becoming adults. And you want to give them that, that privacy, that liberty. But at the same time, we need to keep an eye on them. So check every once in a while their, their writings, you know, where they're taking notes. I know nowadays it's not paper and pencil, but it could be their phone, their devices. Uh, for any particular plans, okay? Um, you know, when their behavior just goes crazy, like all of a sudden it explodes out of nowhere, you know, just keep track of all of those, okay? I, will, I won't read all of them. The other one I want to make a reference to is uh, number five, the non-eating, okay? If all of a sudden they stop eating and you know that they've always eaten, huh, that's number one, okay? Um, keep an eye on that, either losing weight or gaining weight, okay? And part of that is we have to be careful on what we feed our kids, if possible. I know, I love eating Taco Bell and the counselors make fun of me, but I love Taco Bell. But, you know, it's, it's doing that balance, okay? Because a lot of this processed food does have a lot of chemicals and it does affect our, our brain function, our chemicals in our brain, that could, you know, that could uh, lead to certain activities. So if we can do that balance of, yes, you can have Taco Bell maybe once a month uh, versus every day and adding those healthy foods and, and see if, if that will help them because food plays a big part in the development of your child. You know, it does with the personal development, it does with their mood swings, it also helps with their, their growth development, believe it or not, 
Um, so keep an eye on that, okay? Um, there's some other ones, but I'll let you read them on their own um, because we kind of covered them around. Can we go to the next slide, Mr. Bernie? Yes, and how to help. I know that's why you're here. Um, how to help is keep an eye. Keep an eye on your family member, keep an eye on your child, on your student. Um, ask for help, okay? Don't just say, what's going on with you? No, because that might set them off a little bit more. Them themselves may not be understanding what's going on. Going through the, their youth, those years, there's a lot of things going on. Um, just in the development of their whole body and their brain. It's um, just when they're babies. Remember when they were born? You know, they were this tiny, you know, tiny, tiny, tiny. You know, they were about, what, 18 inches long, give and take. And within a short period of time, they grew. By the time they're five years old, they're almost like, what, three feet tall, okay? Um, it's the same thing that's happening inside in their teenage years. There's a lot of chemical movements going on that, you know, may cause them to act a little different. But it's just keeping an eye on them and don't judge. You know, if they're quiet one day, it's okay. You know, if it continues, then I would ask. But if it's a one day deal, it's okay. All right. Ask for help. You know, it could be, you know, one of the school counselors that we can make referrals. It could be someone at the school. Right now that we're through the pandemic, I know that's a little bit more difficult. They can send messages, they can send emails, they can call us, but also find that trusted adult outside, outside of school. Um, this also helps. So when we are on vacation and we're not available, the school's not available when we do go back. So keep those in mind to also have a trusted adult outside of the school setting, okay? Um, let me see, validate their feelings. It's okay to talk to our kids. It's okay, that's the number one thing. Um, just like the video uh, mentioned, that little boy was happy that somebody reached out. Um, you know, I know it's difficult because us as parents, you know, have other responsibilities and we're working and we have other children, you know, we have other things that we need to do, but maybe having them connect with someone that they can talk to and don't be afraid. Um, you know, um, uh, you know, we come from, you know, a society that doesn't a hundred percent, you know, and this is worldwide for the most part, doesn't really accept that there is mental illness. You know, we forget that our brain is an organ, just like our heart, our lungs, you know, part of our body, which is like our arm, we break our arm, we go to the doctor, it gets a cast, you can literally see it. Um, our brain is also an organ that needs attention. And it's okay to go and receive and ask for help, okay? Um, us as counselors, we can help to make those referrals if uh, there's a point where we believe that this is more than what we can handle. So that's when the referrals go out for actual psychologists, a therapist, psychiatrist. Um, we do have a way to refer those. So just let us, let us know. And remember, Karen, you're not alone. You have family members, you have friends, um, you, you know, that you can trust them to ask for help. You know, we're, I, I always tell my friends and my, and my children that we're social little creatures. You know, we can't do things on our own. We need that help. So trust and ask for help. And, okay, um, you know, every once in a while, you know, we forget to tell our kids because it's easy to say, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. You know, but we have to remember that we have to praise them and give them feedback. Um, you know, when they do something good, you know, say out of the blue, hey, I noticed that you cleaned your room the other day. Thank you. You know, that, that, you know that's a lot of help, especially right now that we're all home. You know, I'm mean, not having to go to work and, and, and you guys are home. Thank you for that. It'll catch them off guard. It's okay. It'll make them feel good. Also, you know, and I'm guilty of this. We forget. These are kids. Okay, they're learning how to live life. And sometimes we expect them to know how to do everything, like how to clean the house, how to cook, how to pick up. And sometimes we still have to do that, you know, that extra teaching, you know, and helping them and coaching them to do, to do things right. 
um, you know, like sweeping, you know, do they know how to sweep, you know, teaching them how to sweep, uh, do they know how to do their homework, you know, that feed, feedback can be, you didn't do your homework, it's okay, how about you reaching out to your math teacher and asking for help, you know, that, that could be a suggestion, and um, their feelings, we don't talk about feelings very often, but every once in a while, um, like I keep saying, the example of them being quiet one day, um, it's okay. You know, you can ask them maybe a couple days later, hey, I noticed the other day you were, you know, you were, you know, fairly quiet or you weren't as talkative as you normally are, you know, and, you know, and have them talk about it. That way they know that you noticed it, okay, even the little things, okay, and, and then hopefully that communication will start to open up a little bit more, okay. And, you know, clear and respectful communication. I know those are big words, which basically means be kind to each other. I know we're tired. It's been like 11 months of us going through this pandemic, you know, adding the fear of what if, you know, somebody in our family becomes ill or somebody in our family has already, you know, you know is currently ill. So you have that extra stress, you know, just kind of saying thank you. Um, may I ask you, uh, for something, because sometimes we forget and we're in a rush, you know, trying to live day by day. And um, just continue to support your, your child. You, you can kind of go through these, you know, but telling them that you're, you're you know, they're part of the family, um, you know, coping skills um, is another one. We had that example at the beginning with the breathing. You know, if you see them that they're totally, you know, very, very agitated and really upset, you know, just taking a few minutes to kind of work on your breathing. Um, you guys will be surprised of how many of us do not know how to breathe properly. You know, we're constantly just going, you know, sorry, it looks kind of funny, but it's like just we're just breathing in and out, in and out. Um, and that tends to make us kind of hyperventilate, but we're not getting that clear, true oxygen going all through the parts of our body to make us kind of clean out okay i'll give you an example i mean an example right now of covid you know the number one thing that they keep telling us is if you become ill keep an eye on your oxygen level okay oxygen in our bodies is very important so just having them say okay sit right here or you know standing up whatever works and let's breathe you know, you're, you're feeling a little anxious, let's breathe through your nose, in through your mouth. Excuse me, in through your nose, out through your mouth. You know, and that makes wonders. You know, we try this and we do this in the counseling center, um, you know, many times. And, and students keep reporting back to us that it, it does work, okay? So keep an eye on that, you know, the breathing technique, um, you know, and, and connect them to something. You know, connect them to something, um, teach them how to resolve problems. You know, sometimes we, you know, things won't go our way, you know, and our kids will get very frustrated and they're like, I really wanted this, you know, and, and say, it's okay. You know, maybe next time, what could we have done differently? So working that together. And again, it doesn't have to be parent and child, you know, use your, your family members, your, your network of, of friends that can also help you. You're not alone. It could be the school too that can help out. Okay. And these are just more of the everyday things. Um, I, I kind of keep adding different things, but just on, on the regular, on the, the regular everyday. The other ones were more of the general, these are your everyday things, okay? Um, you know, enforce boundaries. It's okay if you say you have to go to bed at 10 o'clock at night, okay? And then all the devices are off, okay? Why young people, kids need to sleep? Sleep does miracles. Body needs to rest and regenerate, okay? Especially right now with the pandemic, uh, the kids are on devices all the time. You know, they're doing their homework, they're going through school, and they need that time to kind of, you know, settle down, you know, have that device go away. Eyes need to rest, you know, it's okay. Um, the other thing is that you guys can do at home is create those routines just like when they were little babies, 
You know, they slept at a certain time. They woke up at a certain time. You knew that they took their nap, you know, from two to three, just as they're going through their, your, their youth um, and their teenage years. They need to have a schedule. I know it's a little bit more hard because, you know, kids are kids and they want to have their, you know, their own rules, you know, but just as much as we can to have some type of, of a routine when it comes to, a, uh, you know, the, the bedtime uh, schedule. Okay, I already talked about eating, you know, having full meals if possible. I know I understand that sometimes it's, it's not possible, you know, but, you know, eating, you know, and adding more of those healthy meals. And especially right now, it's that exercise. This is stuff that we can do every day, you know, just exercising, going outside, stretching, you know, even inside your home, you know, stretching, believe it or not, does miracles. Um, at the same time, maybe doing a couple sit-ups. You don't even have to leave your home. Or if you could walk around the block from your house, if the park is too far from your home, that, that's okay. But kind of doing some type of physical activity, okay? Um, and, you know, keep in mind, you know, those, those cultural activities. I know that all of us are missing the getting together with family, celebrating, you know, Christmas, New Year's, if we do celebrate any of the uh, holidays that, that we had around December and January, you know, um, Mother's Day is coming, Valentine's Day, you know, all of those have, have taken a hit uh, currently with the pandemic. But that doesn't mean that we can't keep them in mind and celebrate them at home with our own, you know, small, you know, household. You know, that will kind of help us kind of keep the everyday regular life kind of activities. Alrighty, um, you know, and again, at the bottom, uh, those healthy eating habits, as much as we can, you know, choose wisely because it does affect your child development. And I believe Ms. Luan Singh is next. You're muted, Ms. Luan Singh. Good morning, everyone. Okay, now I'm not un I'm unmuted. Um, I miss Lon seeing one of your eight counselors at Sweetwater this year. Um, and so I have the last uh, part of our presentation today. Um, so just to piggyback on what Mrs. Casa shared about all these different coping strategies and uh, getting exercise and uh, practicing breathing. Um, uh, techniques and things. So in the chat, I put the link to our virtual wellness room. So like Mr. Briney and Ms. Chavez Casas mentioned, we, we have a wellness room in the counseling center that students could go in and, and de-stress. And uh, obviously that's not available to them right now, but we did create a virtual wellness room that's got some uh, videos of some calming music, calming scenery, um, some stretching exercises, breathing exercises. Uh, some fun games uh, as a distraction, because sometimes it's good to kind of just play a few games to distract yourself from the stress and anxiety that you're experiencing. So that resource is available to you as well uh, to use. And so um, the link is in the chat. And so um, now we're going to talk about how to how to get support for your child. So in the videos, they referred to reaching out to your school counselor. Um, so if you notice that your child um, is experiencing some kind of mental health uh, concerns, that their behavior has changed, their affect has changed, their mood has changed, and you just need someone to bounce those ideas off of, uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to us and just tell us kind of what you're noticing, what you're seeing. Um, school counselors are not therapists. We're not psychologists where we do therapy with students. But uh, we are able to help connect you to resources in the community to get you the help that you need. And so as a school counselor, we like to think of ourselves as kind of like your uh, primary care physician, right? We know a little bit about everything, but we'll have to refer you to somebody who can help you specifically with the needs that you have. And so um, please reach out to us if you feel like um, you need someone to talk to about what you're experiencing with your children or even with yourself and with your family. Uh, we, we, we help families uh, as a whole. Uh, so you're definitely uh, welcome to reach out to us if you need to. 
Um, you can also reach out to your child's teachers because you can bounce your ideas off of them. So if you're noticing some kind of behaviors that your child is having at home and you wanna see if those same behaviors are happening in the classroom, you can definitely ask the teachers because that's what we would do. So if you talk to us about your child and things that you're noticing, we would reach out to the teacher and say, hey, do you notice these types of things happening with the student? Um, and then so we can kind of gather all of our evidence to see what is happening with the student in order for us to, to help them. Um, I can tell you from personal experience with my own children, uh, with behaviors that I've noticed in them here at home, I've asked their teachers um, just to kind of see what they're noticing with my children. Um, and sometimes it's good to know that, it, that they are doing well in class and then maybe it's just a behavior that's happening at home. So that's gonna help you identify that there's something happening at home that's triggering some of those behaviors rather than it, because it's not happening in the classroom or at school. Um, and you can also make an appointment with your pediatrician. So, so sometimes when we uh, um, suggest this to parents, it, they're like surprised, like, oh, I could do that. It's like, yes, your pediatrician is not just for physical health, like Mrs. Chavez Casa said, you break your arm or you know, you're having high blood pressure, then you go to your doctor. But they are also uh, your go-to person for your mental health because your brain um, is also part of your physical body. And so if you're noticing some mental health concerns, you definitely reach out to your pediatrician and tell them that you're noticing your child's behavior has changed, their mood has changed. Uh, maybe they're angry all the time or they cry all the time or what have you and um, they're there to help you through that as well. So um, it's not going to be something they haven't heard of. They hear about it all the time, all the more now uh, from parents in regards to mental health concerns. So please reach out to your school counselor, to your teacher or uh, your pediatrician if you feel like you need some support for your children. Okay, go ahead, next slide. Um, so the whole talking about mental health, uh, a big chunk of that is self-care uh, for yourself as a parent, because you can only help your children as best as you can if you are taking care of yourself. Uh, what do they say? You can't pour from an empty cup, right? So you need to be able to give to others after taking care of yourself first. And so here are just some things, uh, we, we've mentioned a few of these things uh, already in our presentation today, but uh, we really want to make sure that you as a parent are taking some time to um, take care of yourself. Um, and it's okay to ask help from other people if, if you need that. Um, we are part of those uh, group of people that you can reach out to if you do need help. But even just going out, standing outside in the sun for a few minutes is, is wonderful. Uh, listening to some relax, relaxing music, uh, even doing that breathing exercise that we did earlier in the presentation, uh, just in a quiet space, you, you count, breathe in for five seconds, breathe out for five seconds, and you do it for a minute five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and coming out of that, you feel better. We feel better all the time when, when we do that and we try and, and practice that in the counseling centers, in the counseling center amongst us, the, your counseling team, um, because we found just mindful breathing helps a lot with self-care and, and your mental health. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Uh, and here is a whole list of different resources that are available to you um, as a parent. The first two at the top are specifically for our community. So National City Family Resource Center, or FRC, we refer to them, um, uh, is directly in National City. Uh, when we do referrals, we usually send directly to the National City Family Resource Center, and they have resources for everything housing, food, um, legal services, everything. Um, so they're kind of our go-to uh, people because they're very versed in all the different resources that are available in San Diego County uh, in order to help families, um, especially with mental health um, issues. Um, and then there are a bunch of websites and things there too. 
um, the last two at the bottom, the National Suicide Prevention uh, Lifeline and the National Text uh, Line, are resources that our students use a lot um, when they don't feel comfortable reaching out to their parents or reaching out to a, a trusted adult at school, or they feel like they can't reach out to their friends. Um, they've used these 800 numbers and that text line just to kind of get their feelings out and get some positive feedback from um, someone. And so when you talk to your children and you notice that something's going on with them, you can say, you know, you might not be comfortable talking to me about how you're feeling and that's okay. Um, I care about you, I love you, but I want you to be able to talk to somebody. So you can talk to your counselor, you can talk to any of your teachers, any adult on campus that, you're, that you feel like you trust, or there's these phone numbers or this text line that you can call if you feel like you need someone to talk to because they're there to help you. Um, so you want to make sure that you're extending uh, different kinds of help to your children if they're not comfortable talking to you. Um, okay, and so we're finishing our presentation here. Uh, just a reminder, uh, the Sweetwater Counseling Department has a website with lots of information um, in addition to mental health things that we post uh, often, uh, college, career, uh, job search, just all kinds of things that are happening in the community in regards to academics, college, career, and emotional, social areas. Uh, we post on Suhai Counseling. So if you want to get regular updates on the things that we post on Suhai Counseling, you'll see the yellow arrow there pointing to that top right corner where you can put your email address and you'll get an email once a week uh, with a summary of all the things that we've posted on Suhai Counseling so you can keep up to date on some of those things. Uh, our next slide has all of our counselor emails. So our counseling team looks a little different this year than it did last year. We have one additional counselor, two new counselors. Um, and so if you would like to reach out to us, um, email is best right now uh, because the, our phone numbers are linked to our office numbers and we're not in the office at school right now. And so what happens when you call our, um, our counseling department, it sits in a voicemail and then we don't get it until it gets forwarded uh, to us by the secretarial staff. So emails we get immediately. So emails are kind of the best way, but if you're more comfortable with phone, you can leave an, a, a message and uh, give us a few days to get back to you. Uh, we're on social media as well. So everything we post on our website, we highlight on our social media as well. We're Suhai Counseling everywhere on social media. And um, at this point, we'll entertain any questions. Um, if you want to put a question in the chat or if you want to unmute yourself and ask us any questions, we'll entertain those at this time.